Well, hi everyone. Well, we're continuing with my speed runs and seeing how I do. We're actually nearly 1500, and the idea of these five minute games is to uh, try to explain typical mistakes that players make around this rating range. We're getting a lot stronger now, 1550, uh, but I'm still going to try to home in on, on errors that uh, my opponents might play. And uh, also try to think of, you know, just uh, ways what why why I'm winning these positions like what am I doing right okay so my opponent has played a, a very dubious opening and again I, I was very critical of this move earlier on in the speed run session some gambits are okay but some gambits are just tricks they're very superficial and they're not going to help you improve in the long run uh, and this gambit which I know is a bit of fun but it's not going to advance your the Unglund gamut, your understanding. Now, I, I can't actually remember what I'm supposed to do, but it's something with this capture here, isn't it? So, is it uh, bishop f4, check. Now, let me get this right. So, I could always give this pawn up. I, can't, I had this earlier on, I know, in the speed run thing, but it's been a while since we, since, since I've looked at this again my memory so I just I know this is bad but I've got to remember why even if I play my knight out it's good for white but here check here and takes here is good for him why can't I remember this this is crazy <laughs> crazy you know what I'm gonna do uh, because I can't remember the right way to play the refutation of this I mean it's still, I'm just gonna keep it very simple and develop my knight just to come to the square I, I don't know, I just had a mind blank. This happens as you get older, I'm afraid. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep this extremely simple now. And I'm gonna go for a very small advantage. Uh, I know there's a refutation there. And, and the problem is, you know, you, you know, when you're when if you're playing these England gambits all the time, you know, you might get the odd brilliant win. And it's all right to play it occasionally, I guess, but just please don't have some, a, an opening where you're gonna be minus you know, I, I, by the way, I'm just going to put my pieces on best squares. I want to control the center, so I'm, I'm just going to control the center now. I'm going to keep it very, very simple. Okay, he's attacking my knight. I defend my knight. And But, it, you know, you need to play openings that will last you a lifetime. That That's something I, I feel is important to, to remember. Okay, anyway, let's go back to the game. So all I've done now is just try to develop, try to castle. I'm going to castle very soon. My opponent's moved a piece into my half. I want to give it a kick. But now let's complete that development. And now I can start thinking about what is next in the position. Now here, it seems, and one of my main ideas was always to go bishop f4 once I've completed my development. And I'm going to do that because I'm hitting this pawn. So I haven't, again, done anything special in this game. And it looks like I'm going to get a very nice position by just trying to win that pawn. This is one of the advantages of kicking this bishop away. So what do I capture with? Well, I think the more aggressive move is to come in with the queen. He can't castle because I win that knight. And this way allows me to put a rook on the open file. If he attacks my queen, I simply check. There's nothing to worry about over here. He can't checkmate me with a queen. If he could get his bishop here and his knight here, it'd be different. But how can he ever get his knight to this square? So he's gone here. He's trying to... Um, take my bishop but even that I'm, I'm not concerned about um, I could now even win more material with this move but do I want to complicate it or do I just want to keep it very simple well I'm going to keep it very simple he can't castle I'd be upset if I allow him to castle in this game but this move must be a good logical move because in some cases of course if he ever takes my knight there'd be this checkmate if he takes my bishop here, I don't want him to castle, so I'm going to take my pawn. It looks like my king could be weak, but I don't really believe it. I can always bail out into an ending here with queen there check if I get scared. The only thing I have to watch out for is bishop here and queen here. But okay, he's moved here. And now this is going to be weakening my king a lot. Okay, so maybe he, he is going to get castled here. And that's a little bit annoying, isn't it? Maybe I have to go into a slightly better ending now with this move can I do anything else first well knight here I might try but then queen takes here b4 does that help me well then this one okay let's go b4 I'm thinking I probably should just swap swap the queens off because 
I can't see any way I'm going to stop this move, but I'm going to do it on my terms, and I'm now going to play it. And we're a pawn up in an ending. Of course, we're a minute down. What's my opponent's error? Well, I mean, it's a bit of a dubious opening, but he played his opening moves very quickly, even though he's probably in a position he didn't know about. He played it a little bit passively, which was funny. He should have put the pawn on d5 rather than the square. Saying that, I've still got a lot of work to do here to win this position, especially now that I've kind of weakened myself here. So it's not by any means straightforward, this. Um, so what do we do? e3, king, f2. Do we swap the rooks off? Do we try to improve our knight? Uh, this looks the most natural because my knight has some good squares. I'm going to obviously move a little bit quicker here. He's creating a threat. Okay, creates a threat. I defend the threat. Let's not, let's not, and my king now can have here. If there's a, this check, okay. Now this seems like a horrible positional move. This is like a, this is like one of those artificial moves. Yes, you create a threat, you attack my knight, but now I have a protected pass pawn, which I really don't think he should allow me to have. Um, my knight was moving anyway, and he, he would prefer his pawn to be back on f7 here, because this pawn could then not advance, because it's always going to be captured, but... From here on in, this pawn is always very scary. And now I'm just going to simply take that pawn, attack his rook in the position. And that's the second pawn I've won. It seems like he's really drifting. My knight is going to just come back. I have ideas of now forking. Will he look at my last move and see what my idea is? Of course, this is what you should do in chess. You have to work out what your opponent's last move is trying to do. That'd be okay. He does. Well done to my opponent. I'm going to force that bishop to make a decision. Because I want to take here, okay, which one do we take? I'm going to take this one because I don't want to go in opposite colour bishop position. That might lead to more drawing tendencies. I'm going to grab this pawn now. That was one of the ideas of forcing the bishop away from here. But more importantly, I'm going to try to bring my bishop back and simply try and exchange off pieces um, with this move. And... The more pieces that you exchange when you've got the extra material, the better. So this is a very simple way to play. And let's put the rook on the most active square. I'm so many pawns up now. How many is it? Three pawns. I can even lose a pawn uh, if I wish, and I should have a winning position. Well, I say I should. I will have a winning position, but my time is low, so I'm just going to try to steal a couple more pawns here. So let's grab that one. And I'm going to use my king. I can go e3. That seems all right. And he's taken a pawn. But I'm quite happy to see him take that pawn. Because now we go into an ending where it's simplified. And I have too many passed pawns. I have two passed pawns. Remember, this passed pawn was something that he created by moving this guy here. Um, so he's really going to struggle to stop two. Potentially, if this pawn was back on f7, he might have some drawing chances, even in this ending. But not here, I think. Um, so what, how are we going to win it though? I haven't even thought how we're going to win this one. I expect we need to use the king. So let's uh, get the king involved. Why not use both of my passed pawns? And there we go. He hasn't even looked at my idea and there's no way he can stop this passed pawn queen. It's funny how that pawn was the winning move. And, uh, you know, I'll go over his mistakes again um, at, you know, uh, at, at when this game is over, which will be next move. Um, what do we get here? Let's get a rook, shall we? It's always nice to queen to a rook with checkmate. So, I mean, the opening, I, I can't remember what I should play there. Maybe you guys in the chat can remember, remember the refutation. And you should always look at your um, games you play. If, if something you can't remember, just revise your, your memory. I'm not going to bother now. I'll, I'll do it after this because it would be a bit boring if I get my book out or I put G chess on now. I can't bother to do that. Um, but the kind of mistakes we got, this position seemed fairly even, I have to say. But first of all, he starts playing a little bit passively very quickly. Now, if you're going to play an aggressive opening, if, you, if he'd have gone for a... Try to gain as much space as you can as well. By playing d6, you know, he doesn't blunt my bishop. My bishop is open. He doesn't gain any space. I mean, why, why didn't he play, for example, something like pawn here? I mean, uh, and then play c6, knight f6, and he has a bit of a space advantage over me then. He doesn't have the problems with the d6 pawn he has in the game. So try and get as much space as you can in the opening. Um, avoid these dubious openings. You can play them until you start losing with them, but at some point you will start losing with them. 
And um, what other things did he do wrong? Well, you know, he, he played very quickly at the start, but he didn't really seem to know what he's doing. I'm developing. Why did he play this move? It just weakens d6. And if he's going to do it, well, he's really in a lot of trouble already here because he doesn't want to give up the two bishops. So it, it, the opening has gone wrong for him. Okay, let's get uh, another another game in, shall we? Okay, I've got the black pieces. We go back to the black line now, another one of my favorites. So again, I break down the openings in stages. The black line, generally knight here and knight here. But if they put their pawn on the f4 square, you may have seen me play this in a, in a previous speed run. I like this move because you get a good Scandinavian. Now they advance, but what I find here is that this knight has some very nice squares. Generally, this square for the knight, again, I know I don't know the theory here, but I know what I'm trying to achieve. I'm generally trying to get my knight here, but the other thing I'm trying to achieve, which you can't do in a French defense, if I play pawn here, it'd be like a classical French, but then my bishop is blocked in behind the pawn, so another thing you can do in this opening is get rid of this bishop. So I'm just gonna exchange this bishop off. Okay, he's moved his queen here, that's interesting. I mean, do I have to watch out for a check? Um, interesting move there. I think I don't, I'm, I think I'm not gonna worry about this one because I can give this pawn and get a lot of development. So I'm going to go here because I have this square for my bishop. Yeah, well, he's grabbed this pawn, but it seems very risky. He's losing a lot of time. So I'm just going to develop. And well done on winning a pawn. Congratulations. I hope you're proud. And now I'm thinking I can try to... I want to open it up a little bit more because my pieces are better developed. But I've also got this move and queen over here but the problem is that my rook always fills so let's give a second pawn not worried about sacrificing more than one okay so he's gone here but he has to be very careful now let's see where he puts his queen he should go back to this square and, and this is the thing you know you know he's, he's if you're gonna play a dangerous idea like grabbing a pawn off your opponent very quickly you know don't move don't move instantaneously you know, you have to really be careful that, you know, he's played like five queen moves in a row. He had to move here. And don't play instantaneously, because if you play instantaneously, you know, in a dangerous position that you don't know, you're going to go wrong. Uh, and um, he's just lost his queen now, so uh, I'm feeling pretty confident here. I'm going to move the knight here, because I might as well keep up an attack now. This is my main idea, and if he goes g3, I will take that one. Um, and he's fallen straight into it. Uh, and so I'm going to bring the queen out and this is looking tremendous and he resigns so I mean that was 12 move game and again this is a 1400 player and I didn't really do anything like special I mean what did I do I knew that after f4 d5 is a very good Scandinavian normally in this position this pawn would be back here but having this pawn here as we saw it really weakens the white king and it blocks the bishop in so when they close it down, I really like Black's position here because in the long run, I'm trying to swap this bishop off for something and then go pawn here. So I'm always thinking of the best places for pieces that I'm developing. My knight sits very well here and I'm gonna control the center with the typical pawn move here. Now, what did he do wrong? Well, I don't think moving the queen is necessarily a terrible move. Had he done anything else, I'd have just swapped my bishop and then gone e6. But I think after pawn here, okay, he can grab this pawn. Again, I don't think this is a terrible move. He, You know, the computer might even say he's better. But for a start, I'm going to go c5 next, by the way, and just try to open it up here. But when you're being attacked, really be careful. If you're putting your queen on the same line as your king, be careful. He had to play queen here. Had he played this, it's just a very interesting position. Unclear um, what the result's going to be. Uh, or how the game's going to go. I was planning to go rook here and use this rook in a very bizarre way. But let's say he'd have taken here. I'd have gone c5 now. And it feels to me like I've got a lot of compensation here. But he's he's surviving. He's two pawns up and it's an interesting position. So uh, again, I, I think he, he moved too quickly. This is one reason I think blitz chess, you need to not just play blitz chess because you get in the habit of playing, and I do, quick superficial moves that might win the odd game, but they're not very good. You need to really get out of superficial move idea. Can't believe how many people are playing this. Are we gonna get a repeat? Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing again. This is unbelievable that two players have played this and we've just talked about this. 
Okay, my knight comes out. Is he going to go d4? Okay, my bishop comes here. This is incredible. Incredible that we're getting a repeat. I don't say he's going to go queen here. That would be insane. If he moves the queen to this... Okay, I just thought the world is going too weird. Okay, so now we're going to see the other parts of my plan. The other parts of my plan now is just a very maneuvering game. Let's have a look. These are, these are again, when you get this pawn structure, it's called locked. It's a locked pawn structure. The pawn's like that. That automatically means it's a closed position. That automatically means it's a long maneuvering game. Now, I'm swapping this one off. As I've said before, I much prefer getting rid of this bishop. Imagine if my bishop was still there. It would be in the prison, and I don't want it in the prison. And now this knight should come in before he blocks it out. And already I have ideas of hitting this square and hitting the dark square weaknesses with my queen. And you can see why I feel having his pawn there is not good for him. Because this move here, which I'm playing, it's a check. If the pawn was back there, he'd be fine. And I feel already I, I have some advantage in, in, in this structure. Okay, this might be an okay move. But swapping queens, I'm then going to use this pawn break. Maybe I just move my bishop very subtly here. I could even go with the knight and then move the bishop. That looks very interesting. But let's go bishop first. And the reason I'm doing this one first is I might be able to move my queen and try to get my bishop to where the queen is. If he takes, my bishop comes in. So now he's moved his bishop. Okay. And he wants to get rid of my knight. So my knight could come to the square. Now, if I move my queen, well, there's nowhere really good to move it. This is a good move. So I think I should come here and keep up some initiative. I don't think I'm going to do just everything on the king side here. The main thing you do in these positions is you need to, you need to chip away at the pawn center. So like in the French defense, this move is normally a critical move to have. So I think I, I really, really must rely on this one. But... I've also got ideas of moving the queen and getting the bishop here. I mean, that is outrageously weird. And, and it looks a little bit strange, but because if he takes my knight, I can come here. But may maybe maybe it's a good idea. Should we try it? So let's try it. Let's try and get the bishop to the square, because then I'm threatening surely to move my knight and win his queen. And I said I'm not going to win just by playing moves on the king side, but I'm trying to make by doing this as much progress on the area of the board where I'm most active as I can. And this little square here is a weakness that he's made from move two, and I'm really trying to home in on that area. So before I play on the other side, I'm trying to make as much progress as possible over here. Okay, so he's playing very well. He, he, he's found this this move, actually, and, and now I'm kind of regretting some some, some of my options in life. That's a very nice move. He's playing well. Here the knight comes here and he and he attacks my bishop. Nice idea. So if the knight comes here, I'm going to have to go knight e4. So I think now I should try to start chipping away at this pawn. This is certainly... The, okay, so now my knight is on pre. And my idea now is to come here because he's not controlling e4. I'm still trying to keep as much tactics up. And this was such a key move though because had I not played this move, I wouldn't have any way to open up the position. And now... With my knight coming in behind the pawn, I can. Um, well, he's blundered now. This check is nothing. I can block and play the rook here. He should have moved his knight. He could have moved his knight. Bishop there, g3. It wasn't the end. And, and now, uh, well, I say he, he's blundered. I mean, um, he's um, he, he, he's a piece down. Of course, you've got to be very careful. You shouldn't relax. I relax too often. This is one of my biggest mistakes in chess. You still need to play great chess when you're winning. <coughs> Only relax when um, you know when the game you've shaken hands. Really, you shouldn't relax before then. I played this check to, before he could castle. Now this does look a little bit dangerous, but I think I can always go g6. I'm not that scared, so I'm going to castle, and I want to get this rook here. Okay, now he played very quick. He's playing very quickly. I'm very surprised because I'm not really sure what his last move did. This is one, that, again, a superficial move. Yes, rook to the open file, but what does it do? He should have maybe tried to play with the rooks coming over uh, and at least try to get something here. I would always play d6. Now, he wants to come back here, so I'm going to flick in the check because I don't want him going to the safest square on the board. If he blocks the queen, my knight comes here, and this keeps his king in the center. 
if his king comes out it would have been very weak and of course now I had planned that this little tactic uh, wins the queen and should should force resignation now I don't think there's any way he, he, he can really play on here um, it's not quite a smothered mate I'm just gonna take all the pieces if I go in here he can take it let's you know let's let's just whip them off uh, and and I, I do say uh, okay I can go check anyway because I'm attacking his rook if he takes it I do say don't relax but you know if I'm gonna relax at all then it probably would be when I'm um, 400,000 pieces up and uh, really oh there goes another one there goes another one Koi he doesn't like his pieces does he this guy and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to does he maybe he doesn't know where the resign button is uh, so what I'm doing okay I know a lot of you are saying it's quite it, it thematic to see how I win one position so what I was doing there was keeping the pressure on uh, trying to stop any activity he had getting my king safe keeping the attack going and exchanging winning pieces when I can okay let's get one more in then for this oh no we don't want to rematch actually no we don't want to rematch okay all right we're playing someone else and let's go back to the Jabava London I'll play e4 on the next speed run now the Jabava London the first start knight here bishop here so let's go along with that I'm going to move the knight out stage one done Jabava London and this is an interesting idea because he wants to go c5 and stop my knight coming in here now e3 is the traditional way of playing the Jabava of London but I'm also arguing that this is a little bit of a slow pawn move I've got two pieces developed he has zero so I'm thinking why don't I instead try to open up the center make it more open because I have better development with two pieces developed to none okay so he's coming over here pinning this one and I think I'm just gonna continue with normal development I want to get as many pieces developed as I can the bishop defending that pawn and my knight probably coming not sure which square next in some cases this is very typical it's like a French defense now this move can be very uh, dangerous to him um, and I feel though I should just play the knight let's not do anything outrageously you know uh, aggressive and we have to take with a bishop here okay so this is his idea but exchanging I don't I, I in in the French defense when you're playing a white this bishop is so good and generally when you play get into positions this is actually now more likely from an one e4 opening when you get this this is like your best minor piece and you always have to think which minor pieces am I exchanging and which minor pieces do I want to keep on the board and I really don't want to exchange this one off so I've got to therefore stop the threat to my bishop and to my knight and I can do that I don't really want him to take this bishop just by blocking the pin and coming back maybe it seems like he's made some progress but let's remember I've got four pieces developed he's got two and I'm gonna take with a pawn because I want to keep my bishops and I want to use this pawn yes they're doubled but I don't really care because of my development I don't want him to take this so I'm just gonna slip it back very simple play so far and I feel my dark square bishop could be a winning piece here because this could be a very nasty pin okay he stopped that but he's played two pawn moves and I'm just gonna castle and I now I've completed my development and surely now I should be thinking of ways to start an attack here so one idea is knight here but I don't really want to exchange pieces unless it achieves something but I guess I can just slip my queen behind that and if he takes my knight I take with a pawn why do I want to get my pawn to this square because it would move his knight away and his knight to me seems like it's on the really good defensive square defending his king so if I can move that knight away that would be good so I am going to move my knight here it looks like a good square for my knight it allows my queen to come nearer to his king creating some threats so I've got to get the queen in and the other idea is if he takes my knight I can kick that one away so now I want to get my queen in because I've completed my development I'm castled and the target is definitely my opponent's king because look at my bishops so my queen is simply going to come over here and this threatens I, I've got a hook there as well that pawn is a hook so I'm going to aim to try and take that one that move bad move he's played a move I don't see any reason at all for that he's played quite well up to that point but you can't play these slow moves it, 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 his position is just it just see, doesn't seem right to play this move 
to me. What does it do? Every move should have a reason. I don't understand what that does. In, any, in anything, it stops this bishop ever getting into the game because he's got a pawn in the way, so this bishop is dead. So actually, I'm going to play a move that requires no fault, but it does. I, I do say you've got to have a move that does something. Well, the rook here, it certainly improves my rook, and it might allow some sacrificial ideas of e6, and it just gets another piece potentially into the attack. Uh, queen g3 was the normal idea, but I don't see what his next move is. So I'm actually, with this move, I'm actually saying, well, you made your position a little bit worse with c6. So rather than trying to win the game, I'm going to let you lose the game. Um, because it seems to me you're not sure what to play. So I'm going to let him play a move like this. Because he might be thinking, I can't find a move. And I'm going to let him. And look, he's played a move which makes his position worse. It's such a good tactic, this, honestly. Um, you know, just, you know basically if you see your opponent's not doing anything and you have to really be aware of your opponent's strategies try and let him play a move which you're very happy to see and now well i mean just queen here simple and good and i could not have played this idea had i not allowed him to hang himself effectively and the reason this is good a threatening checkmate he's got the hook here so if he plays g6 i take the pawn there if he plays this move, well, okay, I've got to keep it open, but he has a lot of weaknesses here. He's got to take with a knight, because he's got to defend h7, but this pawn is now weak, and his, his position is very, very weak. I'm going to move my queen in, and he should now try to swap queens off. I've got the threat of bishop takes pawn. My rook might be able to swing over. I don't want to swap queens, so I'm going to move my queen back, keeping the threat of this one, but also my bishop want, might want to come in here. here attacking his queen my rook is very good look at this bishop really bad piece the double pawns make no difference i might even try to get my last piece in the game this rook uh, i love it when all my pieces are just working so effectively together so this okay so he had he's trying to keep he's playing he's playing okay now i don't want him to move that pawn where his bishop gets in he's moved his knight i've got to move my queen if I move over here, he might move his pawn, and his bishop's free. So I'm going to put it right in front of the pawn. And I realize now his knight has nowhere good to go. I take it if it goes there. His queen doesn't really have anywhere good to go. He can come to f7, but I can stop that threat quickly. His bishop doesn't have anywhere good to go. His rook doesn't have anywhere good to go. So as well as, you know, I'm, I'm playing this game maybe more in, in a manner that I'm stopping his ideas. So he's still finding pretty decent moves there. So I've got to stop this threat and um okay maybe his knight is coming in here next move so he's actually playing this is a good move so okay i'm going to just play f3 i'm going to stop his frets uh, and now if the knight comes here i kind of want to keep my bishops but do i can i go bishop f1 well maybe i have to take here and play against this bishop here but we get more of an ending there which is a little bit disappointing he's defended this very well He's defending this very well, actually, all things considered. He should definitely move his knight here. Otherwise, I'm going to get a time to take control of that square. Why has he gone back? Where, okay, well, I'm happy to see that, obviously. Uh, got to move quick here. Okay, c4. Why have I played c4? I'm taking away that square for the knight, and my bishop might come here, so I'm improving my position as much as I can. I haven't got an immediate win, though. I'm just improving my pieces. Okay, he's trying to swap off the queens. I'm going to come back. He no longer has knight here. And I really want to get my rook to this square, as we've discussed before, and get my other rook over. So I'm also asking the question, what's he actually doing with his pieces? I've got this move under control, so he can't get his bishop out. If he comes with a check, I've got, so what? I can even block. Um, and this move is, okay, he's moved this one. And uh, I'm coming in with the rook, because so I want to get the other rook behind that one. And I'm pinning that pawn down. This weakens his king even more. Just want to get my last piece into the game. If he tries to attack my rook, I can take the pawn. Okay, so let's get my last piece into the game. And now that every piece is developing, this seems like a major weakness. Maybe I can take this one. Takes, takes, check. The king comes here. Um, I've got queen check, rook h4. I think that's winning. Let's go for the immediate kill with this. h4 would be my other option. But this move, to me looks like it should be winning uh, and the point is I now have check his knight has to block now I have this move and because of the serious threat of this I don't see how he can defend 
this one threat. So I did in this game use a little bit of calculation to finish it off. Again, no more than four moves, five moves there, which you can all build up um, just by a bit of work. And um, I feel that this is going. Do remember, by the way, do do like and subscribe to to this channel as well. It does help. So okay, I've still got to win this game. Why don't I take the rook? I was thinking about my clock there, uh, and that was a blunder on my part. So I'm just trying to get as many pieces against this knight. But I've only got 25 seconds left, so I can't um, be a slouch here. But of course, I should be quite easily winning. Well, I am easily winning, there's no doubt about that, but uh, I could have gone there and won quicker. I'm so bad when I'm short of time though. Uh, but I'm trying to play good quality chess at the time, not so important at the moment. I'm not here to win rating points, even though I do want to win every game. And I've got some major threats now, checkmate, good move from my opponent. And he's trying everything to, to uh, survive, but I'm going to keep the checks going. And which way is he going to go? He's going to go there. Where's he going to go? He has to come out with a king because we have checkmate if he goes there. Okay, well, look, uh, I thank you. Do like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll keep these speed runs going. Hope you're learning stuff. I'll try to answer some of your questions in the chat when I get a chance. I haven't been very good with that recently. I apologize. But, you know, I'm telling you all my thoughts and hopefully we're learning something as we go through uh, the rating boundaries. Thanks. Bye.